Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked up at the sky and wondered how the universe works? How does it operate? What truly happened at its creation? And when will it die? Chances are you're probably familiar with standard models of cosmology. Stars, galaxies, black holes, neutron stars, and you may have touched upon dark matter. Over the past 200 years we have made significant progress towards gaining crucial insight into the complexity of the universe we live in, and yet, the more we learn, the less we appear to understand. We know the basic laws that govern the cosmos. Gravity is the integral force in the creation of stars, galaxies and black holes. But did you know that we've never actually seen a black hole? We've picked up radio loud quasars and seen infrared readings of them, but we've never actually conclusively found proof of one. Furthermore, black holes don't even explain much by themselves either. Dark matter and dark energy are said to account for over 90% of the universe's energy, and yet we know very little about its nature and are no closer to finding it now than we were when it was first hypothesised. With over 90% of matter in the universe being completely inexplicable by our accepted models of cosmology, doesn't that cast doubt over cosmology itself? Why do we know so much yet can explain so little with it? Perhaps the answers are not attainable by our current accepted theories, and perhaps the truth lies within a wildly different approach. One such approach is the electric universe theory. What was once considered to be the flat earth theory of cosmology is beginning to gain some serious traction. The theory interlinks with several other plausible models and its papers are peer reviewed and are gradually starting to become more rigorous. The electric universe theory argues in very basic terms that electricity plays a much more vital role in the universe than we currently realise, being essential in the formation of stars, galaxies and the very nature of the universe itself. Its main proponents are the 1800 members of the Thunderbolts project, spearheaded by Wallace Thornhill and the study of the electric universe is starting to become more scientific. In truth, the theory is still the butt of a lot of jokes. Scientific scepticism has now turned to frank dismissal and it does make the theory very easy to discount. But when you look at the ideas behind it and the companioning theories and alternate explanations, it seems as if there may well be some substance to the hypothesis and be it fact or fiction, the theory specifics make for some very interesting reading. So firstly, what is the electric universe theory and what is it proposing? Well, the primary principle is that the universe's nature can be better explained by electromagnetism than it can by gravity. Gravitational theory works well for explaining the formation of planets and moons, but when it comes to galaxies and galaxy clusters, over 90% of the expected mass for the structures we have observed in the universe is missing, should our current understanding of gravity be correct. This is what caused the theories of dark matter and dark energy to be first formed. Contrary to popular belief, the electric universe theory doesn't dismiss gravity as a phenomenon, but rather integrates itself with gravitational theory. Electromagnetism is the missing 90% and is the missing piece of the cosmological jigsaw. It holds that electricity propagates across space much faster than light and gravity, and the electromagnetic currents from plasma are what causes these unique massive structures. Plasma is known as the fourth main state of matter, the previous three being solid, liquid and gas. Plasma is a state in which an ionised gas consisting of positive ions and free electrons result in a more or less no overall electrical charge. This state can be observed at low pressures, such as in the upper bounds of the atmosphere, or under very high temperatures, such as in stars and gaseous mediums. The Sun is mostly plasma, as are all stars. As such, the vast majority of matter of stars and galaxies would be plasma. We know this to be true as well. After all, plasma is a state, meaning it could constitute any ionised gas. The sun is mostly hydrogen and helium, but at such high temperatures it is all ionised, meaning it is in plasma state. This apparent commonality of plasma has resulted in plasma cosmology, a similar model of cosmology to the electric universe theory which was proposed by plasma physicist Hannes Alfven, and it states that 99.999% of all matter in the universe is plasma, and this model circumvents the need for dark matter. Plasmas are excellent electrical conductors, and as such this model holds that the vast majority of the universe is electrically conductive. Even if this theory is not correct, plasma could well be the most abundant form of ordinary matter in the universe, should dark matter be an incorrect hypothesis. 
It is possible that the space between galaxies and galaxy clusters could contain high amounts of plasma. The electric universe theory supports plasma cosmology and takes it a step further. Plasma reacts very strongly to magnetic fields and moving plasma has its own magnetic field and electrically charged currents. As a result, all the energy generated by plasma would be extremely common throughout the universe. This electricity then interacts with other currents and forms everything we see in the visible universe today. One of the main appeals of the electric universe theory is that it offers more consistent explanations to various astronomical phenomena. Given that electricity is everywhere, it plays a key role in everything, from right here on Earth to the farthest reaches of the known universe. For example, the theory highlights that neurons within the human body fire electrochemical signals. Electricity is abundant in lightning here on Earth. Jupiter's moon of Io has electrically charged volcanoes. Solar flares from the sun produce current loops. Interplanetary solar winds make up the heliospheric current sheet. Nebulae are just ionized dusts and grains, acting as one within a plasma. Astrophysical jets carry electric currents throughout the galaxy. And lastly, all the heliospheric current sheets culminate to make one galactic current sheet. Of course, not all of these specifics are as likely or as easily proven as our understanding of, say, neurons within the brain. The theory also provides explanations for more large-scale phenomena. Galaxy formation is one of the main attractions of this theory, given that it can explain galaxies without the need for dark matter. The central website for the theory states that laboratory-based simulations of Birkland currents, currents that flow along geomagnetic lines into the Earth's ionosphere, display very similar characteristics to galaxy formation paths when interacting, and as such, large electrical currents may be responsible for clusters of stars turning to galaxies. Magnetism works in place of gravity in this idea, and this removes the need for black holes and dark matter. Coincidentally, the two main cornerstones of gravitational theory that have yet to be discovered or observed. However, one downfall of this theory is that it fails to explain more complex but important questions. How did the universe begin? We cannot tell. How old is the universe? We cannot tell. How big is the universe? We simply cannot tell. Proponents of the theory label the origins of the universe as an unanswerable question. They also claim that the universe is not expanding and that receding galaxies are due to electrically charged currents that propagate across space much faster than light at near infinite speeds. One final downfall of the theory is that it cannot answer the one key question it would need to answer to be accepted. What is the ultimate source of all the energy in the universe? Once again, proponents claim this is beyond question. No matter how trivial this idea might all sound, there are some grounds to believe the theory, although technically it isn't a theory. In order to meet the National Academy of Sciences definitions of a theory, such an idea would require mathematical backing. The electric universe theory is very light on the maths, but the physics is very graspable. As such, many skeptics believe that the theory attracted its support due to its ability to be understood by the man in the street, whereas normal, accepted cosmology is very difficult to explain and grasp. The Thunderbolts project prefers to avoid using both theory and hypothesis, and instead refers to their belief as a paradigm. Irrespective of it being a paradigm, theory, hypothesis, or anything else it can be called, a key component of any idea's validity is the essential requirement to accurately predict new findings based on the rules you've put in place. Of course, standard cosmology is often bewildered by new astronomical phenomena, and even if the electric universe theory can feel somewhat unbelievable, the list of accurate predictions made by Thornhill is impressive, to say the least. Wallace Thornhill's 2005 publication on the theory accurately predicted comet features, the shape of the heliosphere, the temperature of Saturn's north and south poles, supernovae structures, and even system failures on NASA spacecrafts based on electrical power surges. Some scientists have even gone on record as being, quote, stunned by the findings. Though the theory is often knocked by astronomers, Thornhill has managed to second-guess NASA a number of times, and made surprising predictions that decades of cosmology theory refinery has been unable to do. Overall, it cannot be denied that the electric universe theory is both plausible and makes sense in a number of areas. Electrical currents can provide more specific answers to the structure of astronomical phenomena, and triumphs where dark matter theories lack substance. This has culminated in a sizeable following for the theory and the Thunderbolts project as an alternative explanation to creation. It is hoped that, in the future, more advanced observations of the stars and universe will weigh more in favour of the electric universe model as opposed to gravitational theories. However, 
there are some definite flaws and problems with the theory, the most striking being the lack of any answers or measurements to the origins of the universe, or any explanation as to the source of all this abundant energy that is so vital to the model. And there is another, even greyer area. The electric universe theory works very well when describing the universe as a single entity, and can provide answers to large scale phenomena such as galaxies, but in order for the universe to be truly electric, stars would have to be electric too. This leads us to another companion theory, which is somewhat less rigorous. Given the electric universe theory holds that 99.999% of the visible universe is plasma, it assumes in turn that stars are powered electrically by external currents. This forms the basis for the electric sun theory. The electric sun or electric star theory is often attributed to Ralph Jürgen's 1972 article with said name, which has become somewhat of a holy grail to the hypothesis. This paper stems from a 1946 piece by Emanuel Velikovsky called Cosmos Without Gravitation, although the paper itself doesn't support an electric sun hypothesis and instead draws upon sub-biblical cosmology beliefs which is where much of the criticism stems from. Jürgen's paper states that the sun and all other stars derive their main source of power electrically from the external currents in their surroundings, as opposed to by nuclear fusion reactions that we currently assume. Jürgen's in this paper states that the sun itself may be the focus of a cosmic electrical discharge, the probable source of all its radiant energy. So basically, the sun is radiating light as if it was some giant stellar light bulb or cosmic electrical fire to be more specific. This theory also attempts to tackle the heliosphere. Obviously, we know that the heliosphere exists, it is a large ball-like structure of solar winds which radiates from the sun in every direction, starting to thin out at around Neptune's distance. This ball protects the inner solar system from harmful cosmic rays which move through the universe, but it doesn't impact the Earth as solar winds circumnavigate us due to the Earth's own magnetic field. It is an essential component for varied and complex life to exist on Earth, and potentially anywhere else it may exist in the universe. The electric sun hypothesis takes this a step further, describing the heliosphere as the heliospheric current sheet, which is proposed to carry 3 times 10 to the power of 9 amperes of electricity throughout the solar system. The difference in these theories is that the electric universe proponents believe that the heliosphere counts as a coherent structure, making the heliospheric current sheet the largest known structure in the solar system and not the sun or any asteroid belt. On a wider scale, every current sheet in the galaxy combines to create a galactic current sheet, which is estimated to carry about 3 times 10 to the power of 18 amps throughout the Milky Way, and each galaxy's respective galactic current sheet interacts with one another to attract galaxies such as the Milky Way and Andromeda together and to repel others where observed. This theory has also been met with wide scepticism, mostly due to the discounting of fusion. However, there are those that argue that we cannot possibly know that fusion is in effect within stars by simply photographing and imaging the sun. The SAPPHIRE project is a set of laboratory experiments by a team of five electric sun advocates designed to explore the role of electricity within stars. The experiments take place in a large vacuum chamber, also known as the star in a jar. The chamber works by creating electric discharge and using the equipment to create plasma discharges as so far, the team believe that their findings support the electric sun theory, and are hopeful that the project will allow for a more careful examination of stars and electricity than the standard stellar probe measurements NASA and other space agencies undertake. However, there has been no independent analysis to verify the Sapphire project's findings, and nothing to verify that their work actually lends any scientific credence to the theory. The Sapphire Project isn't the only thing lacking scientific support either, Ralph Jürgen's 1972 paper on the electric sun has been met with plenty of scepticism that some of its assumptions do not align with the expected behaviour of electricity itself. Martin Kruskal, a mathematician and physicist at Princeton University, said that the idea that solar wind is negatively electrically charged is most likely false. If a conducting body has a net negative charge, the electrons tend to move as far apart as possible, and hence gather on the surface. In order for the electric sun's metrics to match the behaviour we have already observed, swirling gases would have to be positively charged. Also, in 1973, just a year after the paper was first published, observations from the Skylab discovered a phenomenon in the sun known as the coronal hole. This occurs when the sun's magnetic field loops back in on itself when exposed to interplanetary space, 
forming arches. The brightest points of these arches are on the tops, but contrarily for the electric sun theory, we have never observed incoming electrons at these bright points, which suggests that the electric sun theory is either flawed or incorrect in some areas. The final criticism, from astronomer and physicist Tim Thompson, claims that our observations of solar winds dismisses the theory of a positively charged electric sun. If it were true, we'd expect to see the sun attracting negatively charged electrons, but instead, we see both electrons and protons being repelled in a consistent flow that is solar winds, meaning that the sun cannot possibly have a large net electrical charge. All of these criticisms have more scientific backing than the theory itself, and it throws the entire hypothesis into doubt. It is more likely that the sun is as we currently understand it, essentially a giant explosion of fusion energy as opposed to a radiating electrical fire. Of course, we don't know the complete nature of the sun, and as technology improves we will likely learn a lot more about stars that we are not expecting, and given that the sun is mostly plasma, it is understandable as to why theories like the electric sun exist. However, it seems as if there are some major flaws and inaccuracies to be found within the physics of the hypothesis, and as a result, we can probably conclude that the sun is not electric. It's important to remember that until we find conclusive evidence of any one hypothesis on the nature of the universe, we cannot discount or dismiss any alternate theory, however unlikely it may seem. The very fact that the study of astronomy has left us with more questions over the decades than answers should suggest that nothing is as simple as we'd like it to be. While the electric sun theory puts major doubts on the electric universe theory, there are major doubts over theories on standard cosmology too. Until we photograph a black hole or find dark matter in the galaxy or encounter a neutron star, we cannot rule out any alternate hypothesis be it the electric universe, creationism, the simulation theory, or the rest. The electric universe theory provides some tangible answers to the giant IOU in astronomy that is the 80% of matter that is missing in galaxy formation and evolution, but it falls down on areas that standard cosmology can conclude on more precisely, such as the size, age, and origin of the known universe. Whatever the case, the only thing we can possibly conclude upon is that we have an untold amount left to discover and learn about our surrounding universe, but until that understanding is formed, we simply don't know. Furthermore, it is important to approach every idea with the same fairness and open mind we give to standard models of cosmology. The overwhelming satirical ridicule of the electric universe theory is somewhat ironic, given that the same approach was in effect when Christianity and other religions placed major social and legal barriers on the advancement of our knowledge of the universe. Space is unimaginably complicated, and the more ideas and knowledge we have access to, the more we can compare and contrast as we attempt to tackle the ancient questions of what came before us and what lies ahead of us. As such, I'd encourage anyone who rejects this idea in a similar way to keep an open mind. There may be glaring holes in some of the ideas put forward, but there are glaring holes in every single theory we have. I will include some links in the description should you want to read up on the electric sun, electric universe and plasma universe theories, as they are very different and interesting approaches, notwithstanding their validity. And who knows, perhaps all the theories on creation interlink. Perhaps electricity does play more of a fundamental role in the universe than we currently realise. Perhaps we severely underestimate just how little we know, and just how much more there is to discover. All we can do in the meantime is aim to commit as many resources as possible to space exploration and research, and maybe one day, we might not be so in the dark. <laughs>